we need these chemicals, um, we need plastics, we need all of these materials. But do we need to use them once only? I.e., what about thinking about smart um, use of, let's stick with plastics for a moment, we can get to other things that are part of the pollution problem, but just with plastics, we often do layered plastics so it cannot be easily recycled. We do unsmart uh, design so that it is very uh, complicated to de deconstruct and reconstruct thereafter. Um, so clearly, we are taking stuff out of the belly of the earth, including uh, hydrocarbons from which we make plastics. And we need that in medical field and in every field. But once it's in the economy, we need to have, the, have that remain in the economy. Today, a very a single digit percentage is recycled globally. What's it's called the circular economy is why you're doing that. That's yeah. right. It's circular. Sorry, I should have said so. Yeah. So thinking about circularity on plastics, but also of everything else. I mean, it's ridiculous to think about these things that are finite metals mining and then it sort of becomes garbage and landfill thereafter. <laughs> when, when it's finite on this good planet, we can't afford to do that when we are seven and a half billion people on this planet. So let's be sure that we again set some policy guardrails up around circularity. And let's, for plastics, obviously that's what we should do, but circularity alone and recycling alone will not be enough. Now, I normally live in, or I do live in Nairobi and, and the, in Kenya. And Kenya has for 20 years now banned, for example, single use plastic bags when you fly in, they will come over the loudspeaker and say, you may not bring in any plastic bags to Kenya. You will get a fine of $1,000 if you're caught with a plastic bags. And you, and you know what? It works. I live a fine life. I packed my entire household and flew all my stuff to Kenya, every item without a single plastic bag. You can just, you can, you can live without this stuff. Some no, of this I mean, stuff. I remember when Rwanda put this in place as well, and very quickly they were able to turn it around. Um, and so, I mean, it does seem a lot of the things that you're talking about, whether it's food waste or whether it's renewable and recyclable plastics or, or, or whether it's just not having a plastic bag or a plastic straw. I mean, these are easy things in principle that you know, no one, if if implemented, would truly miss, right? You could, the world can live with that, and yet, frequently, we also hear that the impact of those changes are tiny compared to the massive infrastructure investments that need to occur. The fact that the planet, just as it is structured, is oriented towards enormous entrenched organizations, institutions, industry that is just about taking away and not giving back to this finite planet. Correct. And yet, you know, this is sort of coming back to your first question. So how do I feel about that? Because I am seeing movements, right? I am seeing movement at the national scale, at the heads of state level. I think in a way people were disgusted. Five years ago, plastics was sort of the ocean thing. Um, and we were talking about marine litter and ocean plastic, which by itself is a very weird two words to put together. But anyway, we were talking about that. And I think, you know, people, kids were disgusted by things they saw on YouTube with birds, bellies full of plastics and the straw being pulled out of the the, the, the turtle's, turtle's nose. nose. Yeah, so we, we all we saw, all saw that, that and that galvanized something. And I think world leaders have actually really mobilized around this. When I was a kid, I also remember the hole in the ozone and it was very immediate. It was very targeted. It wasn't a huge part of the global economy. And in relatively short order, everybody mobilized, did something about it. We don't talk about it anymore. And part of the challenge with climate is, as we've been discussing today, it's everything. It's interconnected. It's hard to know even where to start. No, it is hard to know where to start. And um, but I think we are we have started. Do I think we started too late? Yes, of course. This is COP26. 
is actually 27 years. That's more than a quarter of a century. That's completely not okay. And I'll tell you in the early COPs, because I was there, I was one of the voices that I don't talk about adaptation. I don't want to talk about adaptation in any way. Why? Because we knew what to be done. So to adapt was to accept that it was going to happen, right? Now I'm on the forefront of saying we need financing for adaptation. So yes, we are too late, but at least it is happening and at least we are moving. And so we are on that climate effort now and we just have no alternative but success.